Hi, this is Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, and you're watching the Nation's Music Station. Much music. Here, and we would like to welcome to Canada and to the Nation's Music Station, also to the Pepsi Power Hour, Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Nice, nice to be here, man. Nice, nice to see, see you, you again. Hello, Canada. Here now, we are again. Why did you choose Canada to open up the tour? Well, because we finished here on the last tour. Okay. The last Turbo World Tour, the last show was here in Toronto, actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're getting us, getting us nice and hot and fresh tomorrow night at CNA, so uh, it's just, just a, yeah, I guess, just uh, the way they threw the darts at the map this year. <laughs> oh, Toronto second. No, we, uh, we were, we're just happy to start off in this part of the world and looking forward to a great, uh, great show. Now, the success of Judas Priest is just legendary now. I mean, you've Yes, done legends in our own minds. <laughs> <laughs> you've done so well, though, with the, with the last few albums. Not that you haven't always done well, but, I mean, things have just escalated for you real nicely. Yes, absolutely, and uh, it's still remarkable to think that we are still here and as, uh, as uh, popular and as successful this many years down the line. But uh, the, uh, the real love of what we're doing is as strong as it ever was. The, the real energy and the commitment and all those other things that come into keeping the band together is still there. And beyond that, of course, the fact that the people out there want the priest and come to see us in, in, in concert is the, uh, the all-important thing. Without these guys, the, we simply have no reason to carry on. So it's a bit of a uh, heavy metal love affair. <laughs> I use the word love lightly there, you know. Now, how long has the band been together in this form? You, oh, your yeah. drum seat has always been a hot seat. Yes, it has been a hot seat, yes. It's sort of semi-spinal tap. A little there. tiny bit, but yeah. there wasn't a green mess on the stool <laughs> at the end of each one. No, Dave's been with us now since British Steel, and uh, I, think, I think because the, the basically heavy metal, having that backbone of rhythm and bass and guitar mm -hmm. is, uh, is, uh, is an important uh, part to fulfill and to get it working right. And we just had a bit of a problem getting the right person to do the job. But Dave's been with us now, as I say, for from British British Day onwards, and uh, the the vacancy has been filled, as they say. Yeah, because you and went through we some great bit, drummers. Well, we, yeah, I mean, each of those guys that we had working for us did what was required uh, for the band at that particular time. And um, as you know, Priest's ability to try all these different areas of heavy metal music has been something that we've always tried to explore. We've never kind of put ourselves into one little area. We've always tried to stretch and expand and do as many things as we can. So when those early guys were with us doing the job as was required then, they, they fit the bill. But as we moved on, we needed something of Mr. Holland's caliber. Mm. And uh, so we have him now. And we really feel the priest came into being at that point onwards. Now, we've got something special here. First, spe a number of special things, but first thing, let's go close up on this, because we are going to be giving away five autographed copies of the brand new album, which is, is your entitled accent? Ram It Birmingham. Down. <laughs> yes, well, my mother always told me to speak that way. It was just, it was just that way. Autographed, personally, see it right there? Okay, we're going to be giving this away by the end of the show, so you just hang on. Uh, first track we're going to see is Just Another Thing Coming. All um, right, yes, I remember doing that video. Is, it, is this the old one? The, is this the original video or this the is live the, one? This is the original video. The exploding video. head job, is that the one? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we did that at some waterworks outside of London. It was one of these jobs where you start work at 7 or 8 at night and you finish at 7 or 8 the following morning. So, By the time we did that sequence where the guy's head blows up, these special effects guys have been waiting around for 12 hours and they were really, you know... All we've got to do is press a button, so they put a little bit of extra dynamite in there, which is why <laughs> the guy's pants fell down. It wasn't really intended, but I think it added a little that twist little there, a little bit of sure. humour injected, which worked well. All right then, Judas Priest got another thing coming in stereo on the Pepsi Power Hour. The concept no, the video. It was wrong. a live one. It was a live one. You know, yeah, hey. Happen. Well, we'll try and get the concept one for next week. Uh, yes. Actually, I think. Oh, we have oh, the exploding. Okay, so head. before you leave, maybe we can yes, see the exploding, the exploding head. head. You have um, to have a, the day is not complete without an exploding head. <laughs> <laughs> now, the album that's ramming down, uh, before you went in to do this, you did some sessions with Stock Aitken and Waterman. Tell oh, us yes. uh, how that happened. Yes. Well, and why? And why? I, I heard one of their uh, one of the songs that they would work with one, with one of their artists, Samantha Fox. Well, you know, Samantha. <laughs> and uh, but I, I was listening to this particular song, I think the Spirit of the Spirit of the Night, and there was this quite chunky and heavy rhythm guitar playing in the back 
at Graham. So I spoke to Bill, our manager, Bill Kirbishley, and Bill knows everybody in the business, and it so happens that Peter Waterman is a long-time friend of his. And uh, we just took the, the discussion from there about maybe it would be an interesting idea to get together and, and talk about uh, doing some songs. So, cut a long story short, we had meetings, we said what we wanted to try and get from each other, mm -hmm. and in the first week of, this, uh, of January this year, we went into a studio in Paris, and we, we cut three songs. We did an, a, a real old Marvin Gaye song, You Are Everything, which is a ballad. But we did a, believe it or not, a real heavy metal version of it, a real heavy slow uh, ballad, and it, which is a killer, killer song. And two other songs that they, uh, that they wrote for us, which we all co-produced and rearranged together in the studio. Again, rock stuff. Um, but it was never intended for the stuff to go on the album. We already had the album material written at that point. We just wanted to uh, take the opportunity as it, as it was then, because they're very busy guys, and we thought, well, we'll just jump in there for a few days, see what happens. And uh, so now we have three songs, and everybody's going, please let us hear it. You know, mm -hmm. it was really funny because in England everybody went, no, the priest, it's like priest banana rama or Rick Astley. It's, there's no way this band would would do anything like that. I mean, we're not out, we're not out there after this many years to just get a crack at the singles chart. Um, we've got too much of a of a standard and, and a relationship with our uh, with our crowd, uh, our audience rather, to uh, just to go for something as cheap as that. So they're made. They're in a studio safe somewhere in London, and maybe someday you'll get to hear them. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. I'd like to think that people would get a chance at some point, but we don't know just yet. It's early days. Do you find yourself redefining the meaning of Judas Priest musically every time you go in to do a record? Well, I don't know about redefining it. I mean, the fact is that as long as I think the musicians as we are stay together, there's a distinct uh, sound and character that is always there. But certainly as far as writing songs is concerned, we try and be as as new and as different as we possibly can. Although people are I'm hearing the saying, like, ram it down, it's back to the priest and the traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. This is just, you know, nine new songs plus the Chuck Berry remake uh, that we put together in 1988. It's just, you know, part of the whole repertoire and catalogue the priest can, can create. But uh, the important thing that we try and do for each album is to try and give it a little bit of, bit of its own identity. Mm -hmm. So it each stands out amongst the 13 that we now have released. And uh, I think it, it does that. Which well. came first, the movie or the track, Johnny Be Good? Did you do it specifically for the movie? I think it came almost at the same time because, again, uh, Bill was approached by Orion uh, Pictures in Hollywood. They were making this film, Johnny Be Good, and uh, they wanted a metal version for the title track, and Bill heard of that and said, please let me give Priest the opportunity to provide you with the, their version. So. That was the first thing that we did when we went into the studios in Denmark in October of uh, last year. Quickly put it, well, we didn't quickly put it together. We spent a great deal of time actually because it's a great rock and roll classic, mm -hmm. and to try and give it, you know, justification and rearrange it and put the priest stamp all over it, which is what we've done with other remakes, did take uh, a bit of time to put together. But uh, I think it worked well, and um, we gave it back to the movie people. They loved it, and the knock-on effect from that was that it did get onto the album, although it wasn't originally intended for that way, but we found a, a place for it and we wanted it to be shared on the rest of the, the stuff, so there it is, you know. All right. And it works. So, there it is, Judas Priest, Johnny Be Good from Ram It Down on Much Music.
here with Rob Halford of Judas Priest. Um, we're going to take a look at that piece, right, Morgan, if we will? Uh, okay. Exploding head. Yes, we're going to show you the we actual exploding head. Exploding head. Yes. Exploding head because otherwise, <laughs> everybody's out there going, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> exploding heads. Exploding heads, yes. So we have to yeah. show you exactly what it is. It isn't a real head, we hasten to ask. It's trick photography, as you will see shortly. All right, then. It's not a real person. It's a, I think it's supposed to be an, an English tax collector. They all right. look like this in England. Okay. Are we ready? Okay, let's take a look at it. There's us being blinded to death by lasers. <laughs> Probably up there he is. There. Oh, I remember this one, yeah. Okay. The tax man, you will not take my money. No, no. Are you guys tax take exiles this. now? For the time being. <laughs> there he goes. All oh, right. Bye bye, head. <laughs> Give him a time off, and now his passport on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> revealing secrets. That, that, from that point on, it was an R-rated video. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Now you've seen the exploding egg. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, don't you all feel better for that? <laughs> yeah. All filming. So there was the exploding head. Now Rob's got a couple of videos for you. Yes, we have Lita Ford's new album. A new song from the new album. A new song from the new album. From the album. Yeah. Back to the Kibe. Hello, Lita. She's doing great stuff. She's a lethal female heavy metal guitarist. And another lethal female, one would assume. Lee Allen. Lee yes, Allen. With yeah. barely holding on. Okay, in stereo on the Pepsi Power Hour. From Judas Priest now. Day in, day out, when you go on the road and you do it, and you go on these like six month long tours yes. or year long tours. Yes. I mean, how do you get it up to go out there and do it all the time? It, it, it simply happens each time those lights go down, Mike. When the lights go down and, the, and you, you hear the roar of the crowd, no matter how you're feeling, no matter what kind of day you've had, it's just magical. It really is. It's that, that might sound very show business being me, but it's, it's the truth. Um, and from the moment you start putting on that costume, you know, you metamorphosize into this mwah, the metal monster. You know. Or from the moment that you get on the motorcycle. Yeah, well, we're still <laughs> using the motorcycle, although it's at the end of the set. But uh, yeah, all, all of those things, they, they really, uh, they really kick into gear. And you've probably heard many musicians say that during the day, a lot of it is dead time, apart from this, which is great. Um, it's, uh, it's just a case of getting through the day, doing whatever you can. It's, it's down to mental attitude. If you approach it with a, you know, like, oh, you know, we've got to travel 700 miles today, it's going to affect you, but uh, it's just it's a small price to pay, I think, for, to, to be able to do what we do and to be given so much back from our audience. It's just terrific. Are you still hungry for it? Absolutely, more so than ever, because as you and I were, were talking during the break, when we work now, it's because we really do want to work. And, We've, we've been able to thankfully leave that situation where you jump off a tour into a studio, try and write something and then back on the road again. Now we really work when we, when we feel we're hungry for work and, uh, and I think that reflects in the performance when we go out on that stage. We genuinely do deliver because we want to be there and have a great time with our audience and uh, I think they, they see that coming well, from, you know, from the stage. It also reflects in the sales. We have a couple things to give you here uh, Ooh. because Ooh, you surprise, surprise. have gone gold and this is, I will say, without a lot of uh, help from radio. Yes, this is um, just down to solid support from this our is fans. The fans yeah. Absolutely. This is gold for Ram It Down. Thank so you very much. Thank one. you very much. And That's we terrific. also have another one here for oh my God, this Judas Priest. Uh, yeah. Live, the double live album. That's great. Now these are 24 karat gold, of course, as, as you all know, so I shall have an armoured truck waiting for me when I leave the building. Thank you. I mean, I really do mean that because you guys give us this and it's just wonderful when, uh, when we get stuff like this to, to keep us memories. When I'm, when I'm years old and I'm in my little withered leather and stud wheelchair and I shall look at this, I got this from Canada in 1988. Thank you very much indeed, it's great. Now, are there any young bands that we should look out for, people that you think you might like to work with in the future, or...? Uh... Well, I mean, the thing is, there is such a tremendous amount of uh, up-and-coming new blood all the time, especially in heavy metal. And uh, it's difficult for us uh, in Priest to take time to work on many of the projects because it, it's a full-time situation, and uh, when we do get free time, we like to take a vacation like everybody else does, but I'd like to consider that in the future, possibly. Maybe doing a bit of producing or yeah. management. 
without the cigar. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's just it's just a case of hopefully trying to put over what I've learned and, and the great times I've had and sharing it with others and trying to help you know other people. Now, so you never know out there I might be working with you someday. All right, well, watch what you say. You'll be hearing tapes at the management oh, office, like uh, <laughs> real. We've got uh, five copies of Ram It Down autographed by Rob Halford that we'd like to give away. If you can answer our Judas Priest trivia question. Um, can we get the address up there with the question? Oh, we got the question first? Okay, great. Uh, what was the first album that Tom Allen produced for Judas Priest? If you can answer that question, send the correct answer to this address. Judas Priest, care of the Pepsi Power Hour, 299 Queen Street, West Toronto, Ontario, M5V2Z5. And we will give you one of five autographed copies of Ram It Down for your very own. Now, you're doing Ottawa uh, in a couple days. You're doing Toronto. Are we? Yes, you are. Know. I don't know where we're going next. They just put me in no, the bus. No, I lie down in the bunk for eight hours. We've mixed like Ottawa. That. Where are we going next? <laughs> oh, okay. we're going back and forth. But we are coming so back, you're going back in Canada at some point. We will see you again. Are you coming back into Canada? I believe we are, aren't we? Vancouver. Vancouver? Okay. And something else might happen. Good enough. Ottawa's happen. a little bit quiet anyway. You know, <laughs> ACDC was there. They destroyed the place. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. They Angus is still to his tricks, is he? Good. So, but you've got more Canadian days. So you're in yes. Toronto tomorrow night for sure. Okay, you're just sort of relaxing today, taking it real yeah, easy. Yeah, so I'm seeing the sights of Toronto. I never really get a chance to look around as much as I'd like to. So this time, if you bump into me in the street, have you thought about what's going to happen next? Um, not really. No, I mean, we, we don't know. We don't know now. from year to year whether this band is going to stay together. This isn't the farewell tour, God forbid. But uh, it might be the last time he ever sees tomorrow in Toronto. We uh, we uh, we look at what we've achieved at the end of every year, and we decide, you know, what's to be done next. And basically, it all comes back down to this whole business of the support that we get from the people that want us. And as long as people do want us, and we can be consistent and make good records and give good shows, and We'll be around for a few years yet. There's plenty of steam left in the armadillo. Now, a few years ago, there was a lot of talk about violence and heavy metal, and yes. the name of Judas Priest came up. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first met you uh, around the time of Screaming for Vengeance, mm -hmm. uh, you had told me that when someone goes to see a Judas Priest show, that yes. violence should be the last thing on their mind I'm afterwards sure it because is. they have to be completely I'm drained sure after all you give them. Those very small, isolated incidents that have happened to Priest and a few other bands. Uh, uh, they, they get talked about because, uh, unfortunately, when they do happen, they're very serious and um, it needs to be discussed and it needs to be squashed as quickly as possible. We had a few problems with that personally last year, but it, again, it was on a, such a small level considering mm -hmm. the percentage of people that we play to, not only in, in Canada and in the US, but the rest of the world. But thankfully, I think it's... Uh, it's gone now. It was it was like real fashionable last year to make a bit yeah, of damage, last, into yeah. and that's a really stupid thing to do because that means the promoters get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the horse can't be rebooked or the, the whatever concert playing you're doing, and it basically gives heavy metal a bad name. We're all out here to tell the uninitiated, the, the mums and dads who, you know, have got the wrong end of the story, that this is simply just a great time that we're all having together. It's all good, positive stuff, nothing negative. Those bands that do create the problems, as far as I'm concerned, are the guys that should get their act together. If they do create problems, the knock-on effect is that we all get stuck under the same umbrella as being bad guys, which is completely false. We've simply been out there, as many other of the established career metal bands have been for the years, out there to do a great job and have a good time with our audience. But, um, you know, like I say, it's just something that you have to weather and, and take the opportunity, like I've just done now, to try and put the record straight. It's, uh, it's a small thing that uh, you try and squash as quickly as you can. I think we have now, so... Let's just keep having a good time, folks. All right. Thank you very much, Thank Rob, you, for Mike. coming by. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. All right, great. All right, our guest has been Rob Halford, Judas Priest, going out. We still got Turbo? Yep. Can we do it? All right. All right, crank it up to about 15. Let's go. Turbo in stereo on Much Music.